Welcome back to Wealthy Show number nine. Today we have another great show planned for you. We're going to discuss things such as gut health tips for beginners, how to find balance, elimination diet, even more about sleep, the Normatec arm review, and gut health tea. So we're getting started with just the probiotic update. Probiotic update meaning that I had a goal of one probiotic with each meal for the whole month. And I did okay. I did better than last week. That's for sure. I did five out of seven days. Um, I was, you know, doing holiday things, eating holiday food. So I at least had a pickle. I at least had like, I counted kombucha and kimchi. I mean, excuse me, kombucha and kefir this week just because like, I did so horrible at it the previous week. I'm going to go ahead and count those, count those small wins, going back to our little habits. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. I think it's a great video, but so I counted those things. And, um, on top of that, I had again, pickle, kimchi. Um, those are my two standard probiotics to have as far as food is concerned, just cause they're easy to consume and available most places. But so I did okay, but not great. I'm, I'll do much better this week. I, I'm going to, because it's the last week with that goal. Oh yeah, so again, holidays, I know. So I was, of course, family was all here and everything was good, gravy. I keep talking about how like, this is the holiday season, family time, and I love it. And I hope you all can have someone or something that you can look forward to this season. Um, so I, on top of everything being great, like the highlight was kind of this murder mystery. My sister planned, my sister planned this murder mystery at the house where like you meet together and you do all like everyone has a card and a character. And I did with all of my cousins and it was so fun. It was like very rewarding and, and um, rewarding. It like filled up the battery, you know, you go sometimes where you need to, to fill up the battery, whether that's, you know, a vacation or something like that. But this did that. And, um, it was really fun. It was amazing. Um, so that was great. I loved that. Oh yeah. I was debating on like, uh, whether or not to say anything. I don't even know if I'll put it in the show or not, but like for adventures of him, if you don't know, I have like, uh, my own animation coming out. It's supposed to be an educational animation and it's about a white, a red blood cell that wants to become a white blood cell. Um, which, you know, we know is impossible or is it? So he wants to become a white blood cell in order to fight, right? He's like tired of being a red blood cell. Delivering oxygen is boring and all this stuff. So he's falling off on school. He's not doing what he's supposed to do because he can only picture being a white blood cell battling inflammation and infection and all this fun stuff. So I have that and, and been working on it and just figuring out the next moves, you know, trying to make the next move the best move. And so I have a, I'm working with a very talented and, and educated animator, Anthony Morris. And the reason I've been hesitant about maybe speaking on it is just, um, you know, I don't like to th speak on things until they're like in fruition. So I'm just going to say that like we're working on a graphic novel that I think will be really fun. Animation is super expensive. So just working on gaining some steam in terms of, um, how to make this an, an attractive offer to people that might want to, to invest into it because again, animation is expensive. I can't do it all on my own. So just working on that. I'm excited for the graphic novel. If it comes out, I don't want to put pressure on, on the artist at all. And I like to let him work at his own pace so that it's, you know, the quality that we expect. So, um, just, I don't again, not sure I'll put it in the show, but there you are. We've definitely been working on that. I'm very excited for that. Yeah, holiday season, winter is a tricky time. I like to use it to, to rest. It's a good rest period You're with family. You kind of go a little bit crazy with the habits that we've been forming, the good habits that we've been forming, bad habits that we've been forming because you maybe allow yourself some dessert, some fun stuff, time, drinks, whatever it may be. So you need those times, in, or um, I'll speak to myself, on myself. I need those times in life to, to recharge myself, but I also like winter to you know, really work on things and, and plant the seeds. And um, it's, we're inside a lot of the time. So you have more time maybe resting and recovering than you normally have. So using that time wisely is important. And so it's finding that balance of grind mode and rest mode. And I'm actually quite happy with the balance that I have. So uh, I just always find it interesting because I want to go hard. I want to like set it up so that in the spring it's time to harvest and everything is planted. And but I also appreciate and enjoy those that maybe I don't have as many trainings this this month because everyone's out on vacation, kids are out of school, and my clients are, are gone. So, in having that extra time, Lana and I rest, 
cover, work on goals, work on goals for next year. I'm super excited about, I'm planning on doing a vision board with, with uh, my girlfriend and I'm looking super excited about that because I like to have plans and especially when, when we're talking about business. So that's kind of the updates and we're going to move on trying to keep it again, a little bit more podcasty, less editing and showy, but I think maybe what we'll do is the first part will be podcasty and the next parts that get into the gut health and fitness and lifestyle and wealthy performance and all that might be a bit more show like so let's just figure it out together gut health what do you mean whoa 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 gut health oh no stomach cramp I'm assuming if you found this video, your gut health may not be up to par. And chances are that there's a lot of people out there who don't want to admit it, but their gut health is not up to par either. Or maybe don't even want to admit it, they just don't know that the food that they keep eating keeps causing them the bloating and inflammation and they're not sure what it is. But at the very least, they know that something is causing them some gastric upset, you know, something in their daily diets or their daily routine. We refer to the gut as a center of our health universe because not only does 70% of our immune system reside in our gut, but 60% of our energy is spent towards gut health and digestion. No wonder when you're suffering from upset stomach, our energy tanks. Here are five gut health tips for beginners. Tip number one is that gut health, like any other type of health, is personalized. You want to treat it like an experiment. Take all the advice to heart, but understand what works for others may not work for you. Don't feel obligated to follow others' advice, even if they're considered experts. Your solution is your solution. Tip number two is pay attention to the signs and understand when it is necessary to seek professional help. You need to ask yourself, am I following up on the necessary checkups and appointments? Do I need to go to the doctor? Is there some sort of test that I need to run? Blood tests, colonoscopy, stool tests? I understand we're taking full control over our health, but medical intervention can be an amazing thing. Tip number three is to let your gut rest. Rest and digest is real. Constantly barraging your gut with digestion and stress will inevitably do damage to your gut. So giving your gut time to rest and repair itself is crucial. This can come in the form of fasting or limiting calories. Also, don't forget, because your gut houses 70% of your immune cells, coping with stress is another huge factor to pay attention to for gut health. That means taking the necessary steps to handle heavy stress loads. We're talking about exercise, hot and cold therapy, meditation, breathing, yoga, etc. Tip number four is to get moving. Move. I know tip three is rest, but it's amazing how important avoiding stagnation and rigidity within the body is to your gut health. I'm not telling you to lift every weight in the gym or go out and try to break the world marathon record. A simple 20 minute walk and stretch session will do the job. I have two amazing dogs and one of the many reasons that I have dogs is that it forces me to go outside and get some movement in. Because look, I've been there where the only appealing thing is to lay on the floor in a puddle of pain driven tears. But having two dogs who need daily walks will not allow that. If you're not a dog person, obviously don't get a dog, but find a way that gets you up and moving for even just a little bit. Tip number five, last but definitely not least, is feeding the good bacteria and starving off the bad. If you can keep that in mind on your daily decisions, then everything will be better off. That applies to all areas of health. Will this food increase good bacteria and decrease the bad? Did I sleep well enough and on a consistent schedule? Will this activity add or relieve stress if you enjoyed this video and you need the advanced version go ahead and check out three tips for ibd flare how to stop flare now Okay, so I navigated here to my three tips for IBD flare, stop flare now. You should always consult your physician, your doctor about how to do this stuff correctly. This is just tips that I found that have been helpful. So what is a flare up? If you don't know what a flare up is, um, then probably you don't have to worry. But if you know what a flare up is, you know what a flare up is. A flare is essentially when the immune system goes crazy and begins destroying itself. During an autoimmune flare, our body becomes triggered to attack our own cells as a result of genetic and environmental factors. I have a three part protocol to calming a flare. The first is identifying and removing irritants to reduce inflammation. The second is add in probiotics or feed the good bacteria to support a healthy microbiome. The third is rebuilding the gut lining with collagen and glutamine. Remove irritants to reduce inflammation. As a result of a flare up, we're gonna experience a lot of inflammation. And inflammation is often regarded as the ultimate disease starter. And don't get me wrong, I understand how big of a role that genes and genetics play in this. But in order to give our body a fighting chance, let's go ahead and focus on some of the environmental factors that are gonna help 
us battle these flare-ups. And that means tackling inflammation head on. One of the best ways to do that is by avoiding high inflammatory foods. This is gonna be a different list for different people, but often it's gonna consider gluten containing foods. Whenever you're suffering from inflammatory bowel disease and you're having trouble digesting things, you definitely wanna avoid high fiber foods, fruits, dairy, and foods that contain sulfites and sulfates. Anything challenging to your digestive system should be avoided. To fight the inflammation, you're gonna to wanna to consume things such as omega-3 fatty acids and turmeric with black pepper. Tip number two on stopping a flare is to add in probiotics to help support a healthy microbiome. So it's not always that we need to add probiotics, but definitely during flare times, we wanna add those probiotics. An IBD flare-up is the result of an imbalance of bacteria in your GI system known as dysbiosis. You know, dysbiosis is when the harmful number of bacteria outnumber the good bacteria. Whatever you're eating, whatever behaviors you're subscribing to is helping the bad bacteria grow and thrive while killing off the healthy bacteria. Bacteria. This, of course, leads to inflammation and destruction of our gut lining. That bad bacteria is going to get in your gut and start eating away. So you can check out this probiotic versus prebiotic list that I made. Naturally change your microbiome with these 10 foods. I also find it very helpful to have a supplementation of probiotic bacteria. Again, it may not always be necessary, but it's important for those with inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, to find a reliable probiotic proven to improve the quality of their gut. I'll go one step further and say that's probably important for a lot of people suffering from autoimmune disease just because the gut houses 70% of the immune system. If you have autoimmune issues, it just kind of makes sense. The third tip on how to stop a flare is to rebuild the gut lining with collagen and glutamine. Rebuilding the gut lining is possible, but takes a lot of time, dedication, and patience. On top of creating a healthy microbiome ecosystem, we have to provide our body with the nutrients it needs and these key players of collagen and glutamine, which help rebuild the gut lining. Bonus tip is to avoid unnecessary stress because stress has a huge impact on our gut health as well as inflammation. The best diet is a high fiber Mediterranean diet. No, the best diet is a vegan diet. You're both wrong. The best diet is clearly a carnivore diet. How could you not like veggies? They're so good. Meat, eat meat. As crazy as I looked, I know it makes us all that crazy to hear about all the different types of dieting advice that's out there. You should eat this, but not that. You may think you know what the best diet is, but you have no idea. That is until you try an elimination diet. Before we begin, let me know below, which of your favorite foods did you used to be able to eat and now that when you eat them, they cause you a little bit of stomach pain. And if you're finding value, go ahead and like and subscribe. Fact, there is no best diet. The truth is we're all different and we all have our different dietary needs to cater to. This is based off genetic and environmental factors. There is, however, a way to identify the foods that you should avoid. The elimination diet is the best way to find out which foods you should avoid to avoid gut health problems. No tricks, no gimmicks, no pills. An elimination diet is a short-term diet that helps identify foods your body can't tolerate well and removes them from your diet, eliminating all difficult to digest or inflammatory foods. Important thing to note is that an elimination diet should should be short term because it doesn't supply all your nutritional needs. On my journey to better gut health, I was having a difficult time identifying what was real and what wasn't. Diet A suggested low FODMAP, diet B suggested high fiber, diet C suggested fruits and veggies. Identifying the right diet was driving me crazy. As a part of the elimination diet, I reluctantly narrowed down my diet to three foods. Some baked chicken seasoned with a little bit of salt, white rice, and zucchini. Those are just the three foods that I identified that I could handle well even during an extreme flare. They did not leave me bloating, in pain, or having to run to the restroom. Everything outside of these foods was kind of up in the air. After a two-day bone broth fast and three days of eating like a monk, I began incorporating food sources one by one by one. It was extremely clear almost immediately upon consumption what was causing gastric upset. I found a very helpful thing on WebMD about what an elimination diet is. Elimination diet is a meal plan that avoids and removes certain foods and ingredients so that you can find out what you might be sensitive to or allergic to. Uh, another interesting note is that you cannot be allergic to something, but it can definitely cause you gastric upset. For example, gluten. Elimination diet has two parts, the elimination, avoidance phase, and the reintroduction. Some foods to consider avoiding while on an elimination diet are gonna be citrus foods, milk, eggs, wheat, and gluten, including rye, barley, and malt, shellfish, and soy, as well as some food additives. So anything with an amine, histamines, artificial sweetener, lactose, sulfite, sulfates, nitrites, nitrates, even on this website, it says the strictest type of elimination diet, you can only eat these foods. Apples or apple juice, I'll tell you right now, apple juice is a no-go. I'm here on healthline.com, how to do an elimination diet and why. It's a very valuable article. I like this a lot. If you want to find out more about elimination diets, you can go ahead and visit here. The elimination phase involves removing foods you suspect trigger your symptoms for a short period of time, typically through two to three weeks. Some of the foods are going to include nuts, corn, soy, 
dairy, citrus fruits, nightshade vegetables, wheat, including gluten, pork, eggs, shellfish. As you slowly add foods, typically it's gonna be like one to three days where you add one more food into your diet and no changes. You wanna look for symptoms such as rashes or skin changes, joint pain, headaches or migraines, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, changes in breathing, bloating, stomach cramps, or changes in bowel habits. What you definitely do not want to eat while on an elimination diet are going to be citrus fruits, nightshade vegetables, nuts and seeds, legumes, starchy foods, gluten, wheat, barley, rye, a lot of fats. You want to avoid a high fat diet. You want to avoid coffee, black tea, a lot of high caffeinated foods, alcohol, spices and condiments, sugar and sweets. So now you see why I ate just chicken, rice and sauteed zucchini for like a whole two weeks just because a lot of that stuff like it's what else can you eat that's not on that list, you know? Elimination diets definitely suck, but just remember it's for a short amount of time and you're gonna become very clear on what is causing you some gastric upset. The trivia. I forgot to do this trivia last week, so let's do it now. What is the approximate length of a full sleep cycle? You have choice A, 90 minutes, choice B, 60 minutes, choice C, 30 minutes, or choice D, 120 minutes. And the answer is A, 90 minutes. Now that we know the full sleep cycle is 90 minutes, how can we use this to our advantage? You know, when you're planning your sleep schedule, let's make sure that we plan it with 90 minute increments. And a typical night consists of about four to five of these 90 minute increments. That's why six hours of sleep is kind of the bare minimum. These are not bionic arms. They are the Normatec arm attachment. I've been waiting to do this review for a while, so let's get into it with the snap of a finger. Uh-oh. I hate when this happens. Tech arm review. This is long overdue. I'm happy I finally got to get to it. And without further ado, the Normatec arms are freaking awesome. But before we get into it, comment below and let me know what recovery tool can you not live without? And if you're finding value from this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. My first Normatec review is doing great. It's one of my most popular videos. So I decided to go ahead and do the arm review. I wish I had the Normatec 3, but it seems as though it's similar to iPhones where like there's not that much upgrade between two and three. Someone let me know if I'm wrong about that, but I don't want to shell out that extra money to get the Normatec 3 whenever my Normatec 2 works fine. And while I can't afford the new version of Normatec, I can afford the arm attachments. The arm attachments are initially a little bit awkward to put on. I wasn't sure if the strap went over the shoulder, under the shoulder, but after I settled on under the shoulder, it was on and popping. You can use these things sitting up or laying down. If you're looking for an in-depth review on the technology behind Normatec, I recommend you check out the first video, but in case you missed it, here's a brief summary. Normatec uses IPC or intermittent pneumatic compression, which increases blood flow from the extremities to the heart, in which the heart is able to clean the blood and pump new oxygen and neutrified blood back to the extremities. As we discussed before, blood flow is the key to recovering from workouts and repairing injury. Pros is that Normatec has been shown to increase blood flow, increase range of motion, decrease swelling, lower perceived pain and soreness. The cons is that it's expensive. This thing is not cheap. So I absolutely love my leg and hip attachments, but what about the arms? Using the same technology, the Normatec arms work all the way up from the hands, through the forearms, up the biceps and triceps. It definitely doesn't neglect the shoulders or the traps. And to my surprise, it does an excellent job on the neck region. I also want to address some frequently asked questions from the first Normatec review. Can Normatec help with fat reduction? While intermittent pneumatic compression is used medically to treat blood clots and can benefit recovery, Normatec will not help burn fat. With that being said, if you are able to increase your consistency and frequency of your fitness routines due to a boost in recovery from the Normatec, then maybe it should be considered. Is there a difference from the hip attachment or can the leg units go up to the top of the quads and some of the glutes? I am six foot tall and the leg attachments definitely do not hit the glutes, but they do hit the top of the quad. I really do wish there was a full body compression, but I'm not sure that would actually end well. I might pop my head off like a blueberry or something. I do use the hip attachments the least, but they're definitely great for the hips, glutes, and lower back. 
What's the difference between regular Norma Tech and the Pro version? The difference is in the settings. The Pro allows you to set custom recovery settings, but to be honest, I only choose the preset modes. I think unless you're a professional in the health and fitness world focused on recovery, then the standard version of Norma Tech will do just fine for you. Is there anywhere to buy a replacement battery? After a quick Google search, it looks as though there are a few battery replacement options. You can also try contacting Hyperice as they have seemed to have bought Normatec. How does the Normatec compare to the lay compression system of Vive Health? I had heard of Vive Health and I decided to go with Normatec, maybe just for marketing reasons, who knows? So I don't have the Vive system, but we're here on their website and they have 25 great reviews. It seems like they have their lay compression, sequential pump device for recovery, pain, swelling. It looks like it's the same system as a Normatec. What's included, you get the Vive pneumatic compression device, set of compression boots, wireless remote, air tubing, leg cuff extenders. It looks the same, honestly. Like, it, I don't know that there's that much difference. The one thing I will say is that in this picture, it looks like the legs for this guy doesn't don't go as far up as the Normatec do. But I'm not sure, I'm just looking at a picture here. And then you can see they have their hip attachment as well. I'm interested in this ice wrap right here. That would be cool to try. Oops, I actually didn't mean to click it. Oh, it looks like they have this ice therapy machine. This is actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, we just found this together. I might have to check this out. At the risk of being too distracted, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to what we were doing before. So underrated for this week is going to be ginger, peppermint, and turmeric tea. I have my IBD IBS flare-up treatment tea, naturally treat flare-up symptoms right here. Got a cool little video if you wanna learn how to make the tea yourself, but we'll just go over it briefly. We're gonna start off with peppermint. Peppermint provides rapid relief of IBS, IBD, vomiting, and nausea. One preclinical study saw peppermint has the ability to relax the gut, helping with intestinal spasms and bloating. Not to mention peppermint has significant antimicrobial and antiviral activity. The second underrated item is gonna be turmeric or curcumin. Turmeric or curcumin is a root, a yellow pigmented root that is commonly used in cooking. Clinical trials indicate turmeric has the potential to be a therapeutic agent in diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease. Third underrated item is ginger, which is effective treatment for nausea and vomiting. Research has found ginger to be a powerful yet safe, effective, and inexpensive treatment for nausea and vomiting. A bonus underrated item here Here's licorice root. Licorice root prevents ulcers, indigestion, and acid reflux. And that's it. We're done with the show today. That was awesome. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next week. As always, stay wealthy.